This viscast deals with a problem involving one-dimensional motion. Pause the video to read the question carefully. Now that you've read the question, it's important to determine what's being asked. In this case, there are two questions. One is asking for the initial speed of the ball, the speed of the ball at the start of the problem. And the second question being asked is how long did it take, that is a length of time, for the ball to get to the top of its flight. As is often the case, it's useful to start with a diagram, a sketch of the situation. So here's the ball, it's being thrown directly upwards, and we're told it reaches a maximum height of 5.2 meters. Importantly here, it's a one-dimensional problem. The motion is taking place in a single direction, and it's a problem with constant acceleration. We know that because the only thing accelerating the ball is gravity in the opposite direction to up. That's what we mean by up. And that gravity does not vary near the surface of the planet. So we should be able to use our equations of motion for constant acceleration. And here are the equations of motion. We need to determine which of these quantities we already know from the information in the problem and which of these quantities we're trying to determine. An important piece of information in this problem is that we're told about the maximum height. Something important happens at the maximum height. At the maximum height, of course, the ball is no longer going up. It's not getting any higher. So at the maximum height, importantly, we know that the speed of the ball at that location is zero. So in fact, we know some quantities here. We know that if our displacement, which we'll write as x minus x0, our change in displacement, if that is 5.2 meters, then we know our velocity at that time is zero. Another thing we know is that our acceleration will equal the acceleration due to gravity. But we need to be clear here about what directions we're taking as positive and what directions we're taking as negative. So just for the moment, let's draw a little set of axes here. We'll make that the positive x direction will be upwards. And that means our acceleration will actually be minus g. Our change in displacement will be plus 5.2 meters heading upwards. So our acceleration here will be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. The first thing we need to calculate is the ball's initial speed, that is v0. We don't know what that is. So we need to look at our equations of motion and see which one of these tells us the relationship between the thing we're trying to find out, that is the initial velocity, and the things that we already know. Importantly, we don't seem to have any information here about the time. So in this instance, it's probably this equation right here that's going to be the most useful because it doesn't depend upon time. So if we take that equation there, I'll write it out here, v squared equals v naught squared plus twice the acceleration multiplied by the displacement, we should be able to rearrange that to determine the thing we're trying to find out. If I rearrange that equation, just using some simple algebra, I'll be able to find that the initial velocity here will actually equal the square of the final velocity minus twice the acceleration times the change in displacement. And in fact, I need to take the square root of all of that. And all of those quantities I've been given in the problem. So that's the square root of 0 squared minus 2 now remember our acceleration here is minus 9.8 and then we're going to multiply that by 5.2 and when I do that calculation I find the answer here is 10 meters per second because I've done all of my quantities there in SI units now because I've taken the square root the answer here could really be plus or minus 10 meters per second when I use the equation v squared equals v naught squared etc then I lose my directional information. I'm looking at v squared and v naught squared. But of course I can tell from my problem that the initial velocity was upwards and therefore I can lose that minus sign and I will simply have my initial velocity being 10 meters per second upwards. So now I've solved the first part of the problem. 
I know that my initial velocity there is 10 meters per second upwards. Now to solve the second part of the problem. How long did it take? Now I'm looking to calculate a time. It's the time that it takes to get to the top that I don't know. And I need to again look over at the equations of motion and think which one of those contains the appropriate relationship of all the things I know to help me find the thing that I don't know. And in fact, the remaining two equations that I've not yet used contain time and other things that I do know. In fact, the one at the top is probably the easiest one to use because it's a linear equation. So if I write that equation down, that V equals V naught plus AT, I can rearrange that for the thing that I want to know, namely that the time will now equal V minus V naught divided by A. And that I can put values in for. I know that at the top of the flight the velocity is zero. I know now what my initial velocity is. It was 10 meters per second. And I know my acceleration is not minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And when I do that calculation, luckily I find a positive time because I know it gets to the top of the flight at some time after it started. So I should get a positive time. And that comes out to be 1.0 seconds. Now, I could have used this remaining equation here. I could have used this equation just here. But then I would have had a quadratic equation to solve. That's not a problem. It's a little bit more work. And maybe there's a slightly higher chance of making a mathematical error. But perhaps as an exercise, to make sure you understand using these equations, you could try to use that third equation there to find the time it took to get to the top and see if it agrees with the calculation we've just done now.